Today I want to give a demonstration of how to find confidence intervals for means or for averages. So let's jump right into our, our example. You randomly select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of the coffee sold at each. The sample mean temperature is 162 degrees Fahrenheit with a sample standard deviation of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Find the 95% confidence interval for the mean temperature. Assume the temperatures are approximately normally distributed. Well, first let's look at the formula to find a confidence interval for means. All right, here's the formula. Now it's got a lot of variables in it, so let's define these variables. Well, first of all, we've got x bar, and that is our sample mean. And in this case, we know that our sample mean is right here, 162 degrees. The second thing that we have here is T. I'm going to hold off on that and do that one last. So let's go to S, which is our sample standard deviation. And we are told right up here that the sample standard deviation is 10. Then we've got N, and N is our sample size. At the very beginning of the problem, it tells us that our sample size is 60. So now we get to this T. The T is called your critical value. Critical value. And there, in order to find this critical value, we are going to use a table. So I'm going to go to a different page here. And I want to highlight one thing very quickly. Um, we want to keep in mind that we are going to find a 95% confidence interval. So 95% is our confidence level. Now knowing that, we can look at this T table. Now there are many T tables that are out there. Yours may look a little bit different, or you may find one that looks a little bit different uh, online, but I'm gonna take you through this to find a confidence or find our critical value for a sample size of 16 and a confidence level of 95%. Well, the first thing I wanna highlight is up here at the top where it says level of confidence. Most T tables will have something like that where you can, where you can identify your level of confidence. In this case, we are looking at the 95% confidence level, which is right here. Well, the second thing that we need to consider is something called degrees of freedom. I'm just gonna abbreviate it with DF. Degrees of freedom when you're working to try to find a confidence interval for means is n minus 1, or your sample size minus 1. So in this example, our sample size was 16, so 16 minus 1 is 15, and our degrees of freedom is 15. Well, the degrees of freedom can be found over here on the left, and if I come down to 15, that means that I am looking for... 15 degrees of freedom along with a 95% confidence level and that takes me to this number right here which is 2.131 so in this case my t is 2.131 now remember this is just one example if you have are using different confidence levels then you're going to use a different column according to what you have at the top and then your sample size is not always going to, going to be 15 so you need to calculate your degrees of freedom according to your sample size and then you just cross reference those two values and all of these numbers in the middle will give you some different t values or critical values for your t distribution so we said that our T value is 2.131. Well, knowing that, let's put everything into this formula. X bar, we know is 162. And we are going to create an interval by adding something to this 162 and subtracting something from this 162. And it will give us a higher number and a lower number, which creates the interval. That's why it's called a confidence interval. So if I continue to put my values for my variables into my formula, I end up getting this. Um, all of this on... Let me highlight this real quick. Everything on this side of the plus or minus is called the margin of error. Everything over here is called the margin of error. So 
the margin of error, if I were to calculate just that, ends up being about 5.328. I have faith in the fact that you will trust my calculations there. So now I have 162, which is my sample mean, which is also called the point estimate. The number that you start with right here is called the point estimate, plus or minus my margin of error, which is right here. I, when I do this calculation, I end up getting an interval of this, 156.672 up to 167.328. And this right here is my margin, or excuse me, this right here is my confidence interval. From 156.6 to 167.3, there is the interval. But I'm not quite finished yet. The last thing you should always do when, you're t when you uh, find a confidence interval is you should also write out what the confidence interval means. That means interpret the confidence interval. So in this case, if I go back up, remember I'm finding a 95% confidence interval for the mean temperature for the, 16, the coffee at the 16 coffee shops. So this is how I would type it. I am 95% confident that the true mean temperature for the coffee at the 16 coffee shops is between 156.6 and 167.3 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll just leave it like that. So I hope this has helped and have fun in your stats class.